Homeschooling is basically... It is what it says on the tin. Having a learning environment in your home. And it's studying at home in a structured way to achieve a certain uh, educational outcomes. For me, my idea of homeschooling is not so much the academic. You get to have your own freedom of doing what you like. It's a process of bringing up a person to adulthood. It's Monday morning at the Ong household, and the family is getting ready for school. But they don't have to put on uniforms or sit in a classroom. That's because five of all six children are homeschooled. Only the eldest, Asha, is now studying in a polytechnic. Asha was also homeschooled until he was 17, a move which his younger siblings are likely to follow suit. Sue is more hands-on with her younger children, while allowing the older ones to study independently on their own. Isaac's lessons include Hebrew history, algebra, and his favorite, health and biology. One year ago, he switched from textbooks to a video-based syllabus. Before I, I started this uh, current syllabus, all the stuff I learned was out of a book. I am slightly dyslexic which makes it kind of hard for me to just take in all that reading. But when I went to video, then I would be able to um, listen and I would like just be able to be more engaged into the school. In Singapore, many homeschooling families are staunch Christians. The idea of why we homeschool is so that we can have a, um, the Bible as a major part of our, um, our children's education. So we saw that in, in the public schools, we're not really able to do that. Mission schools in Singapore are still regarded as public schools with a secular syllabus. For most of the day, God is not brought into the classroom. That's why some Christian families prefer homeschooling. Dan and Sue also want autonomy over how to raise their children and who they mingle with. Sue wants to impart life skills such as conflict resolution and forming healthy and enriching relationships. There's one like special quote that mommy says is that our siblings are our greatest allies in life. My closest friends are like Isaiah, Tse and Koko. Like other families with homeschooled children, Sue is a stay-at-home mom, while Dan works as a private school teacher. Singapore has one of the best education systems in Asia, but a handful of parents prefer to homeschool their kids instead. 50 out of 40,000 children are educated outside of the mainstream education system each year. Parents who want to homeschool their children must first seek permission from the Ministry of Education, or MOE. MOE told CGTN in a statement that all Singaporean children are highly encouraged to attend mainstream schools, to acquire formal education and to share common experiences with their peers. Under the Compulsory Education Act, all children must attend school up to primary six or complete the homeschooling equivalent. Homeschoolers must take the National Primary School Leaving Examination between 11 and 15 and score a minimum grade. Grades are critical to many Singaporean parents, but for homeschooling families, other priorities also matter just as much. Sue gives her children the freedom to explore their passions and allows them to manage their own time. When they've completed their um academic you know, goals for the day. The rest of the day, um, they, they are free to go and pursue uh, whatever for the high schoolers. They would be done maybe by three or four. So um, the rest of the time, they, they'll do other things. If I want to go play piano now, I'll just go play piano and then come back to school and like, do my own lessons. Music is a big part of their lives, and the children practice almost every day. They also play in an ensemble with another homeschooling family. You know when you practice by yourself, it's quite boring. When you play in a group, then the sound is very nice. You have to hear it all together. The homeschooling community in Singapore is small but active. Parents share tips on their children's learning and take turns to organize events. 
within the homeschoolers also, it's quite fun. There's there are fairs, you know, where we give the children opportunity to make stuff. We set up a booth, and then they they also learn how to display their items and market their products. It's quite fun. With all this exposure, Sue isn't worried that her children will lack social skills. They're socialising amongst each other, <laughs> yeah. And we have seen that they have no trouble socialising with people outside of the family as well. <laughs> Experts say homeschooling has both advantages and disadvantages. The advantages include the freedom to decide on the curriculum, freedom of schedule and method of instruction, as well as the chance to spend quality time with the children. But on the other hand, homeschooling can be a challenging and extended process. Apart from socialization issues and lack of same age peers, some homeschool children also face difficulties in re-entering the public school system. However, this wasn't a problem faced by 37-year-old senior manager Ivan Ke. As a teenager, Ivan was homeschooled for three years. Being an only child, his classroom was a very different environment. I definitely miss having friends and people around me in general. I also miss girls. <laughs> you know, you don't, you don't get a lot of that when you're, you're alone. And uh, I think when you're formative, you tend to be shy, right? You, you won't really reach out to other people. And that's why, you know, I, I spend a lot more time uh, reading and at libraries, right? Because you're alone, you don't have friends. <laughs> Books are your friends, basically. Ivan went to a mainstream primary school, but left the secondary school at 13. Like the own family, he wanted a religious education. Ivan also did a lot of research into subjects he enjoyed. So if you're very interested in uh, history, world history, or you're very interested in scientific history, uh, you would be reading up on it so much that you would get a fairly deep knowledge of the subject matter. When he returned to secondary school at 16, Ivan had to adapt to classmates from diverse backgrounds. So someone who's homeschooled completely, you wouldn't have these like cultural sensitivities. Why you shouldn't put a bottle of water in front of your Muslim friend, you know, for Ramadan. That's very important, when you, especially when you go into the workforce. Looking back, Ivan wouldn't change his homeschooling years. But when his daughter grows up, he would choose a different path for her. I would send her to a public education system during the day. Um, but if she's interested in a particular subject, I would uh, definitely focus on like personal classes. Hello. I always make time for my daughter to teach her things. So for just generally to spend time with them, right? And I think that's uh, also a form of uh, knowledge uh, transference, yeah. Regardless of their education and religious backgrounds, all parents want their children to grow up with the right values. You hope that your, your kid will be uh, honest, like being herself and being uh, true to herself. To watch our children grow is a, is a great joy. Like when, when I've achieved those goals of them, you know, having a successful family life, being able to, um, you know, perform in, in the roles that God has placed them in, I, I would be happy. <laughs> After all, there's more to a meaningful and enriching life than formal schooling, regular classes and routine examinations. For Simon Asia, I'm Mirulu in Singapore.